In today's video, we are going to be going over the definition of a derivative, which explains how the derivative is calculated. So if this is something you struggle with or are interested in, keep watching. As a refresher, the derivative basically allows us to calculate the slope of a function at a particular point. So let's say we had the function x squared and we wanted to find the slope at this point. Well, to find this value, we can use the derivative. But the question you may have is, how is it calculated? And the way it's calculated is from this definition right here, which is defined as the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now you may have a lot of questions spiraling right now like what is h or why are we using limits but we're going to be breaking this down of how this defines a derivative so what we're going to be doing is starting from the beginning and working our way up to show how we land at this definition so with that being said let's start from the beginning now let's say we had our function x squared and let's say we had a line that crosses through this function now there's a name that we call this line, and we refer to this line as a secant line. And a secant line is basically a line that crosses through two or more points. And as you see, this line is crossing through two points on our parabola. Now let's say we want to find the slope of this line. Now to find the slope of this line, what we can do is pick out two points on this line and plug it into our slope formula. Now as a refresher, our slope formula is m equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So we can say that this first point represents x1 and y1, and we can say that our second point represents x2 and y2. Now before we plug these points into our formula, what we're going to do is a little substitution first. Now for our x1 and y1, instead of x1, we're going to label that as just x, okay? And instead of y1, we're going to label that as f of x. And they're pretty much the same thing. We're just renaming the values. But remember, this is a function, so this is completely fine. This is x and f of x, right? Now, these points, we can say they are a distance away from each other, okay? And we don't know the exact values, so we're going to label that distance as h. So these points are h away from each other, right? Now, for our second point, since our second point is h away from our first point, right? Instead of x2, we're going to label that as x plus h, okay? And then instead of y2, we're going to just say that's f of x plus h, okay? So now we've done a little substitution of our first and second points. So now what we're going to do is plug it into our slope formula. So for our y2, we're going to plug in f of x plus h. And then for our y1, we're going to plug in f of x. And then for our x2, we're going to plug in x plus h. And then for our x1, we're going to plug in x. So when that's all plugged in, we get f of x plus h minus f of x all over x plus h minus x. Now we can clean this up a little because in our denominator, notice that we have x plus h minus x. So we can actually cancel out those x's and that will leave us with just h. And our final answer for our slope would be f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And boom, we have now just calculated the slope of this line or our secant line. Now, this right here, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h has a fancy name that we call it. We're not really that fancy, but we refer to this as what we call the difference quotient. And I like to say that the difference quotient is really nothing special. Um, it's really just another way to represent our slope formula. Because as you see, this is basically a slope, but we just did a little substitution between our x1 and y1 and x2 and y2, and boom, we landed at a different way of representing our slope formula. Now you may ask why we did all this, um, just to land at another way to represent our slope formula, but I am about to show you in a minute. So right now, as it stands, this, well, if we plugged in our h and our x into this difference quotient formula, this would be another way to basically find the slope of this line. But remember, this is just finding the slope between these two points, but when it comes to finding the derivative, we don't really want to find the slope of these two points because we want to find the slope at this one point right here. And as it stands right now, that's not what it's doing. So how would we go from here to here? 
is the question. So the way that we do that is, remember, these points are h away from each other. They have a distance h between each other. But what if we decrease that distance between those two points, where that second point is getting closer and closer to the first point? And what if we decreased it to the point that h is so close to the first point that the distance is almost close to zero? The distance between the points is almost zero. Now you may ask, why do we want to be almost zero? Why can't we just make it zero? And the reason being so is because remember, in our difference quotient formula, h is in the denominator. And if we plugged in zero for h, well, remember, if zero is in the denominator, that would make the value undefined. So we can't make h zero, but we can make it almost zero. And this is where we use limits, where we have the limit as h approaches zero of our difference quotient f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Because essentially, we want h to get very, 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 very close to zero. And by doing this, it almost allows us to pinpoint what the slope is at this particular point. And that is how we find the derivative. In this definition, this is why this defines how we find a derivative. And as you know, this is known as the definition of the derivative. Beautiful. <laughs> um, but that pretty much wraps up this video. Um, and to kind of summarize it all, the definition of derivative or you know, how we calculate the derivative is found by just really taking the slope between two points where the distance between these two points is almost nothing. And that is how we find the derivative. Very crazy. <laughs> but I hope you found this video helpful, guys. Um, and take care. <laughs>